Uh, thank you, Chairman, for a very kind introduction. And thank you, committee member, for giving me this opportunity to talk about checkpoint inhibitor for Espargo gastric cancers. So as you know, treatment options for gastric cancer are recently increasing with FDD TBI in involvement in Asian countries and pembrolizumab for pd positive CPS1 population or MSI tumors. And these treatment options are discussed in Pan-Asian JASMO ESMO guideline and recommended if available. And after that, not a few trials trial try to uh, evaluate the upfront checkpoint inhibitors in area lines of treatment. So Keynote 61 could not show the improvement in overall survival with pembrolizumab in pd positive CPS1 population. Survival curve clearly closed. Moreover, PDL and negative patients showed a so shorter survival with pembrolizumab than paclitaxel. In contrast, patients with higher PDL expression defined as CPS10 or MSI tumor showed a greater treatment effect of pembrolizumab. So clearly, gastric cancer is not one disease in terms of response to checkpoint blockade. So today's my talk mainly focus on gastric cancer, but this keynote one at one trial for esophageal cancer also suggests that the predictive value of pd one expression, where only pd one CPS10 subgroup met the primary endpoint. So until now, three randomized control trial of checkpoint inhibitor in first line completed the enrollment, keynote 62, checkmate 649, and the attraction 4 trial. And today we have a result from keynote 62. So looking at the first comparison between pembrolizumab monotherapy and chemotherapy, it met the primary endpoint to show non-inferiority in over survival. Upper limit of 1990.2% confidence interval was 1.18, which was lower than predefined 1.2. Looking at the 95% confidence interval, upper limit was 1.1. So this hazard ratio suggested non-inferiority. Moreover, lower incidence of grade three or higher event may support a, a, non, a non inferiority of survival. However, it showed a cross the survival curve. Initially, pembrolizumab of the diverse, very similar to that of Kino 61. And after median, late survival benefit of pembrolizumab was suggested. So in gastric cancer field, non inferiority trials have changed the clinical practice to use oral flow pyrimidine like S1 or Ketsalamine or Oxyprazine. So hazard ratio from this Keynote 62 are in line with that of past pivotal non-inferiority trial. However, cross the survival curve is one of the concern to apply this into clinical practice. So looking at the subgroup analysis, most of the subgroups showed a hazard ratio less than one, but still some difference was suggested according to region and site of primary tumors. But this trend was completely different in Keynote 61. Uh, hazard ratio was better in G-junction tumor and no Asian countries. So this may be confounded by other factors. So maybe we need other much factorial analysis. In contrast, both Keynote 62 and 61 suggested a greater treatment effect of pembrolizumab in CPS 10 patient population. Median over survival was improved by six months in, in 62 trial. I think this must be the largest difference in median over survival in any phase three trial for gastric cancer field. MSI high results were not available now, but it was only 6.5% in CPS 1 population. And Keno 61, MSI high was only 12% in CPS 10 patient population. So most of the CPS 10 patient population are microsaturated to stable. So this Keno 62 confirmed the preplanned non inferiority in over survival, but it showed a cross the survival curve. And then maybe the some missing information. First round is a survival post progression or PFS2. What happened after first progression? And the second is additional biomarkers. So we have a CPS 10. CPS 10 must be the important factor, but still not perfect. So one of the interesting characteristics of this Keynote 62 is the discordance between PFS and over survival. Even in CPS 10 patient population, median PFS was three months shorter with pembrolizumab than chemotherapy. In contrast, median over survival showed a six months improvement. And this kind of discordance between uh, over survival and the PFS were also reported from other clinical trials with checkpoint inhibitors. Usually hazard ratio in over survival are better than that of PFS. And the uh, correlation between PFS and over survival were not high, very low. 
So 62 results were not outlier. So another discordance in 62 results were median PFS and the mean treatment duration. This was very similar in chemotherapy arm, but more than three months is difference in pembrolizumab arm. So this may be explained by the difference between median and mean, but it still suggested some possibility that not a few patients may continue pembrolizumab even after progressive disease at central assessment. And actually, proportion of patients with subsequent therapy are very similar between two arms. So I think this is very difficult to explain the survival post progression, the difference. So, but how is the efficacy of a pasto study chemotherapy? And actually, this kind of analysis was already reported from other trials, such as the atezolizumab study for non small cell lung cancer, where median over survival was improved by four months, but no significant difference in progression free survival. So actually, survival post-progression were longer with atezolizumab arm compared with chemotherapy arm. And importantly, patients who continue atezolizumab even after fast progressive disease showed the most favorable outcome compared with patients who, who received additional chemotherapy or no treatment. In pembrolizumab trial in fast line, PFS2 was analyzed. PFS2 was defined until the disease progression during secondary chemotherapy. It showed a nine month difference with pembrolizumab first followed by chemotherapy compared with a chemotherapy followed by pembrolizumab or anti PD1 therapy, even with a very, very high rate of crossover treatment. So, sequence might be matter. But this kind of analysis is better to be done in Keynote 62 to understand overall survival results correctly. So one of the important caveats is that treatment duration is not the same with the effective treatment period. This very interesting paper published in JCA Insight from Japanese group investigated the binding of anti-PD-1 on memory T cells. It was detectable even after five months since last administration of anti-PD-1 therapies. And it was also detectable even after subsequent therapy. And K67 positivity in T cell uh, predict the outcome after discontinuation or efficacy of subsequent therapy. And this may partially explain the carryover effect or enhancement of subsequent treatment. And actually, not a few reports suggested a better activity of cytotoxic agent or molecular tiring agent after checkpoint blockade. Left side is the gastric cancer data from Japan, which showed a very high response rate of usual cytotoxic chemotherapy after checkpoint blockade. So this kind of analysis is also better to be done in Keynote 62. So next is the biomarkers. First, pembrolizumab investigator initiated a trial suggested a high response rate in EBB positive case or high TMB case by whole exome sequencing. But listen to Chinese trials suggested showed a one partial response among four EBB cases, so not all. And response rate was still higher in TMB high patient according to whole exome sequencing. So we already have uh, approximately 130 patients with nivolumab in our institution after Japanese approval. We identified 15% of response, and not a few cases showed the microsatellite instability. And two out of six EBB positive cases showed the objective response. So again, not all. And TMB by NGS did not clearly correlated with the outcome. And the T TMB by NGS are also still controversial in other studies such as attraction 2 and MSK impact. So I think it might be better to analyze TMB by whole exome sequence and EBB status in a larger study such as Keynote 62. And one of the important point is that not a biomarker for responder, but also a biomarker for non-responder might be also very important. So this kind of rapid progression or hyperprogressive disease may partially explain the cross survival curve even in CPS 10 patient population. After approval of nivolumab, we experienced approximately 20 patients with this kind of rapid progression. And these patients have some characteristics such as gene amplification, liver metastasis, and large tumor size. And these patients have a very poor prognosis, less than two months, and very few chance to receive subsequent therapies. Very interesting recent report in clinical cancer research suggests that some PDR and positive makers may induce this kind of hyperprogression. 
And this may explain by the uh, fact that if the portion of anti-PD-1 may activate microfragile and dendritic cell, it was re uh, reproduced in preclinical studies. We also evaluated the biopsy material from patients who showed rapid progression in gastric cancer. And here we observed the high infiltration of K67 positive regulatory T cell in local tumor after treatment. So we going back to the preclinical study, and we confirmed that exposure to anti-PD-1 clearly activated PD-1 positive regulatory T cell, represented by very high KS67 positivity after anti-PD-1 therapy. And this T reg cell clearly inhibit the CDA cells. So using the T reg enriched mouse model, anti-PD-1 enlarged the tumors compared with the control. So this is a very similar phenomenon with the hyperprogression in clinic. So actually, PD-1 positive T reg cells are more enriched in non-responder with checkpoint blocking. And very interestingly, these PD-1 positive T reg cells are more enriched in gastric cancer compared with non-small cell lung cancers. In contrast, the PD-1 positive CD8 cells are more enriched in, non in responders, as you can see in this PFS curve. And this, may be, this is explained by the fact that the strong stimulation signal through TCL result in very high PD-1 expression on CD8 cells. So PD-1 on CD8 reflect the antigenicity. So new antigen induce more higher expression on CD, PD-1 on CD8 cells compared with the shared antigen. So if we combine these two factors, PD-1 positive CD8 cells and PD-1 positive T reg cells, it more correctly predicts the outcome after checkpoint blocking. So these results should be further confirmed in additional studies. And recent single cell RNA sequencing clarified the exact phenotype to be activated by PD-1 blocker, such as TCF7 stem-like cell, some kind of effector memory T cells, and CD39 PD-1 positive CD8 cells. I think this exact phenotype can more correctly predict the outcome after checkpoint blocker because checkpoint blocker not work for cancer cell but works through immune system. So at this time, uh, it still remains unclear that pembrolizumab for CPS1 population become one of the treatment options or not, but it should be discussed with regulatory authority and within several guidelines committee in each country. But if available, I would like to use for following case such as CPS10 or higher PS0 without any clinical significant symptom and a high chance to receive subsequent therapy. In Japanese patient population, not a few patients met this criteria. So let's move to the chemo combination. There are several rationales to combine chemotherapy and checkpoint blocker, but I think the most important one is to reduce the tumor burden. This Nature Pipe paper published two years before suggested the ratio between activated K67 positive PD-1 positive CD8 cell and the tumor volume is very important to predict the outcome. So to reduce the tumor volume by chemotherapy may improve the outcome. But one of the misconceptions is that chemotherapy may induce immune, immune, uh, new antigen. This may not be true uh, with uh, many chemotherapy. This was well discussed in Annals of Oncology. In contrast, chemotherapy may boost immunotherapy through modulation of immunophenotype. So until now, many clinical trials have been conducted so far to combine chemotherapy and checkpoint blocker for several kinds of tumors. And most of the trials showed a significant improvement in PFS and overall survival. So why not we do the same trial for gastric cancer? And actually, Keynote 62 is the first trial to assess this clinical question, but disappointingly, no improvement in overall survival was observed in both CPS1 and CPS10 patient population. And the most surprising result from this 62 is a better outcome with pembrolizumab monotherapy in CPS10 patient population compared with chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab in terms of long-term survival. So at this time, the exact reason of this negative result remains unclear, but we should discuss from several aspects. So one of them is the backbone of chemotherapy. Both cisplatin and carboplatin showed a significant improvement in overall survival in lung cancer trial, so at least cisplatin may not diminish the activity of checkpoint inhibitors. And the other trial also applied the platinum agent as backbone chemotherapy. In contrast, oxaloplatin may be a better partner uh, with a checkpoint inhibitor because it induced more immunological cancer cell deaths compared with cisplatin. One of them was published in Nature four years before. So other is a 5-FU. 
We had an cancer trial with a very similar 3 arm design like a Keynote 62. We can indirectly compare pembrolizumab monotherapy and pembrolizumab with a 5 fu and cis protein. And here we did not observe any significant difference in terms of one-year PFS and two-year PFS between pembrolizumab monotherapy and the chemo combination. Overall survival also showed no significant difference, but it did not show the detrimental effect. So one of the very important differences between head and lung cancer and gastric cancer is the maintenance 5 fu In head and lung cancer, we usually stop the 5 fu with a platinum agent. But in gastric cancer, not a few uh, doctors or not a few uh, patients receive their uh, 5 fu as a maintenance therapy after discontinuation of platinum agent. And actually, in several preclinical studies, it suggests that the repeated administration of 5 fu have a negative impact on the immune system. Depletion of nucleotide lead to the inhibition of effector function, as well as the interference with differentiates from naive cell into memory cells. And the other in vivo study also suggests that the inhibition of effector function, as well as the reduced tumor infiltrating lymphocyte after a five few, a repeated five few. But anyway, we should stay tuned for attraction four and checkmate six one nine trial. So maybe we should know more detail about the chemotherapy or molecular targeting therapy from an immunological point of view. Uh, this very interesting recent Nature Medicine paper evaluated the chemo in, uh, induction after uh, and following subsequent therapy for triple negative breast cancer. And here induction with doxorubicin and cisplatin improved the response rate with uh, following subsequent therapy, but it was not observed with cyclophosphamide and irradiation. So maybe type of chemotherapy and duration must be important. So previously, we investigated biopsy material from gastric cancer patients received the 5 fu and oxaliprochin. Here, we did not observe any change of immunophenotype at two months of treatment. In contrast, ram based therapy showed a trend of reduced regulatory T cell on local tumor, and we confirmed that BGFR2 are very highly expressed in uh, regulatory T cells. Negolafenib, as one well of the other March kinase inhibitor, uh, showed the same tr efficacy to reduce the T reg cell in clinic, and it also re reduced the tumor source in macrophage through CSFR inhibition. And this effect was very interestingly observed uh, more with a lower dose. Higher dose is not better. So we have conducted a phase one trial of regolafenib and nivolumab. And the preliminary results were presented in previous ASCO and will be updated in this ESMOGIA with updated biomarkers. And here we observed the response rate of 44% in gastric cancer and all patients were microsaturated stable. And seven patients were previously received the checkpoint inhibitor and experienced this progression, but three of them achieved the partial response. And these are actual patients who achieved a good response with this combination with RIBA metastasis. As you know, RIBA is very hard place to achieve the response with PD and bulk and monotherapy. Median PFS is around six months for gastric cancers. And this patient showed a uh, disease progression after nivolumab monotherapy, but showing the response with regolafenib and nivolumab. And this patient showed increased infiltration of regulatory T cell after treatment. And uh, after nivolumab monotherapy, but it showed a reduction after combination therapy. And actually, this response was maintained approximately one year. And uh, right side is a, uh, right side suggested the patient who showed the partial response also showed a trend of regulatory T cell. This might be the mode of action. So we, uh, lembatinib is also another example of March kinase inhibitor, which showed a similar effect in preclinical study. So we have conducted a phase two trial of lembatinib and pembrolizumab for gastric cancer. We already finished enrollment, and we will report the result in the future. But I do not think that the target immunosuppressive cell may be not enough for most uh, on all patients for gastric cancer. Not a few cases may require immunoinduction. For that purpose, this kind of oncolytic viral therapy might be one of the example. This termination is oncolytic adenovirus, which replicated only in telomerase positive cell and resulting in cancer cell death. And at that time, it activated APC and CDA cells. So we have conducted a combination trial for gastric and esophageal cancer. And the preliminary results were presented in previous ASCR. It showed a primary tumor reduction in most cases, and some patients also showed a reduction in distant metastasis. And after oncolytic therapy, some patients showed that infiltration of PT beta high PD1 positive CDA cell in local tumors. So we have started the infusion for liver metastasis. And finally, CAR T therapy will be coming for solid tumor soon. 
in last ASCO, uh, uh, clothing 80.2 specific cardiotherapy for gastric and pancreas cancer showed a very promising activity. Response rate was 33%. So this is my summary. Stress outline might be an option for treatment for anti-PD-1 therapy for gastric cancer, and Keynote 62 showed a crossed over survival, but it still opens the door for checkpoint inhibitor in area lines of treatment. Crossed over survival curve and chem combination not work, so this Results suggest that we need a better biomarker and a better combination. Thank you for your great attention.